Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jenna Redfield. I've been sick for a couple weeks, so I haven't made a new YouTube video, but today I wanted to talk specifically about a topic that is really relevant. It is Mental Health Awareness Month in May. And let's just talk a little bit about mental health when it comes to ADHD. And even if you don't have ADHD, how you can track some of the mental health things that are happening in your head using Notion and other tools. So let's just get into it because there's a lot to talk about. I want to make a disclaimer that I am not a licensed professional in mental health. I also am not like licensed to talk about ADHD, but I do because I think it's helpful. And again, I'm not an expert. Please go to an expert, not me. I'm just giving my opinions um, and just want to say that as a disclaimer. So when it comes to mental health, um, obviously it's worse now than ever for most people due to the pandemic and other things in the world in the last two years. But one thing that I think is important is to really figure out, okay, well, if, if you know that mental health is something you struggle with, how do you, at least the first step is being aware of it, right? Um, whether that's, you know, going to a doctor, getting medication, whatever it is, one of the things that I think is important to do is to start tracking things in your life. I'm very much a tracker. I track my weight. I track all these different things in my life. Um, obviously, we have to track our own income. But one of the things that we never really talk about is tracking our mental health, tracking our triggers, tracking therapy sessions, tracking meds, whatever it is, tracking all of the things that you need so that you can start to see patterns, right? So to me, tracking is all about patterns. When I track my weight loss, I can see on a scale every single day using the app that I have how what I'm doing each day affects my, my, my weight. And by doing that and tracking it each day, it has made me lose 20 pounds in four months, five months, which is crazy. I've never had that happen before. And it made me realize the power of tracking things. And what's cool about tracking is it's all backwards. It's things that have happened in the past, right? It's things that have already happened. So you don't have to plan ahead. You're literally just tracking what has already occurred. And even that can be kind of hard for ADHDers, I'll be honest, definitely. But let's like think about some ways that it might be easy or just an easy switch to kind of start to track some of the things in your life. The first one that I think is really important and probably the easiest is if you're going to a therapist or something to start recording those sessions. Uh, I use the app Otter. I do a virtual one-on-one uh, -on -one therapy session over the computer on Zoom and she has the Zoom so I can't access any of the recordings but I just record the audio using Otter. I can record what I say, what she says, and it's something that I can listen back to. Um, it's totally legal to do that. And it's something that I love to have just if I can't remember exactly what was mentioned or something that I said, I'm very much an external processor. So, you know, some of those breakthroughs that can happen, having them recorded, even if it's me crying, is, is good to have. Another thing that you can start to track is your daily moods. So figuring out exactly what your mood was that day, figuring out, you know, what, why was that? What, what were the, the circumstances surrounding your daily mood? So within my ADHD Notion Tracker, I have a mood, a daily mood tracker, which has a bunch of different moods that you can select. So that one's very interesting as well, is tracking your moods. And along with that, tracking your triggers. Um, I think having a trigger list, um, whether that's in Notion or whatever, is good to have. Uh, start to pay attention to when things trigger your, your mental health. Is it a statement someone said? Is it something on the news? Um, what, whatever it is, knowing that it's a trigger is helpful. <laughs> Sometimes you don't realize it's a trigger until after it happens or weeks later. So really think about as your mental health is going throughout the day, start to pay attention to it and being a little mindful about what's actually happening in your brain and how your body is reacting to it. Another thing you can obviously track is your medications. If you have any uh, vitamin supplements, um, making sure that you're in stock. I usually have like a vitamin thing in, in my bedroom. So when I'm putting my makeup on, I also take my, my meds and my vitamins. So that's something else that you can also track is to have some sort of tool and system for that. Another thing that I think is important is to start journaling or at least writing down a few words. I'm not much of a writer when it comes to my own thoughts. So if I just write down like three or four words that talk about the day or, or my, my thoughts 
that I witnessed that day or something, that is really helpful. Um, there is a space in my ADHD journal in my Notion template for journaling, but also obviously a lot of people like to write it down in actual journals or maybe you do it on your iPad using good notes or something, whatever it is, making sure that you have some sort of system to write down some of your thoughts. Another thing that you can also do is have a list of either affirmations, which you can say out loud, or one of the, my favorite things is to have a list of accomplishments or think, nice things people have said about me. When you are so focused on some of the negative thoughts and ne negative self-talk, you forget that good things have happened to you. Um, and so having a list of all of those is really helpful for uh, especially ADHDers who may forget. Uh, so I really think that having all that is really important. And then another thing you can also have a list of is self-care. So if there's things that you do that help you with self-care and you just can't think of anything, having a list of that is really helpful for yourself. Finally, I wanted to mention a few books that I've been really loving that have to do with mental health. Um, if they're, you know, if you're like really struggling, one of them is called Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith. It was just published recently. Really good book about a lot of different things. Um, she's a therapist, so it's a lot of things that her... People have said why no one's told me this before. So it's a lot of those kinds of things. Another really great book is, um, I read it recently and it's called Loving Like You Mean It, Use the Power of Emotional Mindfulness to Transform Your Relationships. This was really good, especially when it came to triggers and mental health. And then another book, I actually have it right here, it's called Mindset Switch by Tanya Rainier. Also a great book about triggers. Triggers are a big one for me. Like I get triggered pretty easily. So I think having um, knowledge about why that happens and how to shift your mindset is really helpful. The last book that I just finished uh, last week is called The Power to Be Disliked. I absolutely love this book. Uh, there's it's a lot of challenging chapters that really change the way I think about the world. I know that sounds crazy, but I really was impacted like in a positive way by this book. Um, and I really think you're going to learn a lot from it. I keep recommending it to people. So it's kind of long, it's not a quick read, but it's definitely a good one and you're gonna be completely challenged the whole time and really, really change your mindset on some things. So anyways, this is a quick video. I have to record this uh, before work because I've been sick for two weeks. But anyways, I hope that you guys uh, got something out of this video and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.